a little bit of P4T6 as well. So these are intrahemispheric coherences. Always watch the EEG, look at the raw signals. Okay, position five, you'll FP1, FP2, PZ, and OZ. OZ is an open channel right now. I'll assume we're getting clean signals. You'll notice the z-scores do not compute for OZ, which is appropriate because OZ is not a 1020 location. Aside from that, everything's normal. Okay, uh, the recording is complete. At this point in time, we can close the training screen. Uh, we have a number of options available to us. The first thing you're going to want to do is hit review session results. And uh, you will get the review screen. And for the five minutes now, we see uh, different values. We're going to be looking for some general trends. Uh, I'm going to go to the settings for this control and raise this and uh, bring on all four channels. Uh, we'll be looking at uh, four of the components. We're seeing some of the trends we hope to see generally because we're more posterior here. We want to see the alpha back here, and we do. Uh, other than that, we basically uh, have a, a, a graph that is spelling out the uh, mini Q as it was conducted four channels at a time, minute one, minute two, minute three, minute four, minute five. To get access to the numbers, it's possible to simply press this button here that says Quick File. I'm going to press the button, and uh, over here on my other monitor, I will drag it over in just a moment. I'm getting a, a nice virus scan on my data, which is always appreciated. Thanks, Bill. Um, here is the tabular summary of the data that's produced by the BrainMaster software. Uh, by using the session wizard and the mini Q functionalities, you can see the data are all labeled FZ, CZ, T3, T4, F3, F4, et cetera, et cetera. The entire 19 channels has been tabulated with the uh, labels of the um, sensors. That's one of the benefits of using the uh, session wizard and the mini Q. For each sensor, we're given the mean, which is the mean absolute value of the uh, digital filter outputs. Mean F is the mean fraction from the FFT. So this would be absolute power. This would be relative power. We have the standard deviation of the amplitude. And we have the modal frequency. For example, here we see a modal frequency up front of 9.56. And as we scan through this, looking for uh, typical things, we might look then for the um, uh, alpha modal frequency in the back, column G. So we'll just go to O2, and there it is, 9.73. We see it's just a little higher in the back as we would expect. Um, so this is available. This can be exported to the new mind applications. It can be exported into the uh, DMOS uh, DCN applications. It can be printed out, kept online. Um, but what I want to demonstrate is uh, reading into the NeuroGuide application uh, for the MiniQ specifically. So what I'm going to do is I go to my Start menu, and I'm bringing up NeuroGuide for BrainMaster. And uh, in just a moment, it'll be there. Here's NeuroGuide for BrainMaster, OK? So we now can get access to these wave records. We go File, Open. Come on, you can do it. BrainMaster MiniQ. All right? 
and we're on disk C, we go to brain M.20, we go to studies, and we look for today's study. Everything is in alphabetical order, and there it is, Cleveland, February. I will go in there, and there's my EEG records. Wherever I see the E, that's an EEG record. So E01001 means session one, run one, first pause. We didn't even do any pauses, but there it is. So I'm going to go load. It says open another BrainMaster MiniQ file. The answer is yes. I go to two, load, yes, three, load, yes, four, load, yes, five, load, no. Couldn't be easier. So we're going to just tap in a letter for the name. We're going to pop the age in there. We're going to set eyes closed. You can, of course, fill in all the rest of this if you like. We're not going to bother and hit OK. There's our recording. So I like to do um, uh, EEG tracings in black. And I invite, and I'm going to go then for a uh, uh, linked ears reference, just like that. Here's a standard montage. Uh, I'm going to raise the scale up a little bit so the records are just a little smaller. And I invite people to look at these recordings. Uh, these are very good EEG tracings. They have all the details people are accustomed to looking at. You can see the alpha waves waxing and waning. Always use visual inspection to ensure that the records are reasonable. We see the beta activity up front. We see uh, the um, uh, alpha activity. And looking through this entire record, we see it looks very clean. I don't see any artifacts. One of the benefits of going eyes closed is that you can be virtually free of artifact. Now, if I were concerned about artifact, I would simply do the following. I would grab a nice chunk of clean EEG, like that, with my mouse. And then I go Edit, Automatic Selection. I have a choice of the multiplier and window here. And keep your eye on this edit time box right here. Right now it says 0 0.5 or 0 0.05, five seconds. When I hit OK, now it says 12. So the software has picked 12 seconds that it thinks matches my reading exactly. Well, that's not quite enough. So I'm going to go edit, clear automatic selections, then automatic selection. I'm going to raise the multiplier to 1 and a quarter, be a little more lenient. Now I have 43 seconds. And as you can see, it's accepted a lot more. But it's caught little things that it didn't like. For example, this little sharp wave, perhaps. Or maybe the fact that the EEG is so flat in this whole area. The artifact uh, system is looking for areas of similar spectral uh, energy. So let's say we're happy with this. We've got 2 thirds of the recording accepted. And now I go report, report selections. And I'm going to say, I want color maps of absolute power, relative power, power ratios. I'm going to say I only want z-scores right now. I'm not going to bother looking at raw scores because they're uh, difficult to interpret. Uh, we'll ask for spectral values uh, right across the board here. So we're going to get a nice full report. I hit OK. And now I hit Report, Generate Report. NeuroGuide is now creating the report. And the report is here.